mentioned it, but is there any house rules we want to use for our Star Wars game or any themes or anything that's foreboding that we can't talk about in game or anything you definitely want to talk about in game? Which, by the way, as a GM, when you take a Age of Rebellion character, when you pick duty for your character, duty is something that you're telling me you want your character to do in game. So I will try to always make sure that every adventure has something related to your duty. Whether it's, I'll throw out, uh, equipment acquisition means there will be stuff for you to steal or acquire, as the case may be. Or okay. if you're Thanks doing something like wet work, there will be a hit list. There will be a 52-card pickup of you know, imperial or non-imperial people that you should probably try to keep an eye out to take a head off. Nobody would ever do that. Um, there is one thing that I would be super excited about if we could get to at some point. Um, and it's on my character. Um, my character's obsession is because of like his backstory and how he was raised. He has an obsession with the Grand Army of the Republic and like old Clone Wars technology. So any encounters that we could have with like, you know, whether it's, you know, stealing old Republic ships or old Republic like weapons and equipment, like just anything uh, involving that. Uh, I would be really excited to play around with that. Okay, see, that's definitely something that I think the Republic would do would be to get the military surplus stuff because mill surplus is what every fledgling rebel ever uses in every world conflict in the real world. Mm -hmm. How many Middle Eastern armies have World War One surplus? Just saying. Then again, it also falls back to how many Star Wars props are World War One surplus? <laughs> yeah. Man, Marine Corps is used to surplus. <laughs> so all armies use whatever they can get. And, you know, I know at least two of you have a thing about uh, acquisitions. So is there any topics that, that you guys don't want us covering? I know, like, in a lot of smuggler groups, they don't, they don't want slavery to be, ever be an issue for cargo. So that's usually something that gets brought up pretty quick by the group that, you know, hey, none of this. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much good with whatever. Yeah, open your... Aw, oh, see, I love you guys. No X card kind of stuff. No. And what he hasn't mentioned yet is that you're up, if you have an obligation, then those will randomly show up to put a wrench in things. <laughs> Yep, the, the way the obligation mechanic works is we take everybody's obligation and we make a 1 to 100 chart that, you know, it depends on how much obligation everybody has. Because I know a couple of you don't have obligations, so it's, it's, it's mildly likely that it could randomly come up in the adventure. So in advance, sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, no, me too. I, I also took the full 20. Hey, you know, it's it's a good thing to do. Just like duty is what, you know, like, you know, Princess Leia had her duty for the the, the, the Republic, you know, and the, and the rebels. So it's your duty is what your character's motivation is for being a rebel. You know, and that's that's pretty much how I look at it. It's, it's how you see being you are being a rebel for the cause, you know, one way or another. Like, I'm a fan of our uh, astromech droid here who's a badass pilot. And she's really good at handling her ship. That um, she's all about getting technology and equipment for the re the rebellion. And very Even though shiny. Some people could consider her equipment, but you know, thankfully she's her <laughs> own droid. <laughs> and very shiny. Yes, shiny. shiny and new. Shiny, pretty blue. <laughs> you know, blue on gunmetal color scheme. You gotta right? like it. And uh, on the splash screen where it has the big old Age of Rebellion book, as I'm totally going to have to bring the dog inside, you guys can all see each other's character with the green line and the, and the red line, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So how, uh, though, except if you... for one does not show. That right would there. be the one that set himself up, I see. Let me fix that. Sorry, I probably screwed everything up. No, also, no. It, it, there was just some the additional green... drop downs that you you didn't know about, so you didn't take. That probably ah, would have made your, your creation easier. The question is: Are the uh, is the green bar stress or wound, and is the red bar stress? Or I wound? always like to use the red for wound because it looks like hit points, and the yeah. uh, 
green for strain and then the blue for soak so that way if you click on your token you can see what your soak is when you when i shoot you so you automatically know aha i can reduce it by this much all right cool i did it right then going down or are we going up uh you you would go down because you start at 12 and when you hit zero bad things happen yeah, so you have like 12 out of 12, and then you decrease it. And you'll see the bars decrease as you decrease the number. Just just verifying. Mm -hmm. So when you do get hit, if you click on your token, and by the way, I'll also make it so your nameplate shown so people can see your name. There you go. So everybody should be able to see. Oh, actually, one more thing I have to check. Everyone... See, because I think in a game, since you're a team, you should be able to see how healthy your teammates are. Because in real life, you would see how exhausted your teammates really are. You don't need to see each other's soak, but, but it's good to see each other's strain and uh, wounds. So you would click on your miniature. And when you do, you notice three bubbles pop up. Red is for wounds. Green is for strain. Blue is for uh, soak. And if you type in your number in red, you'll see a little box pops up. All you have to do is put minus and a number and enter, and it'll drop your life bar that number. So it does the math for you. Yep. Alternately, you totally can adjust it on your character sheet under the blue current level. Mm -hmm. And, and the, I've got your miniatures linked to your sheet, so it should reflect on both, whichever way you do it. Yep. I also have a physical copy of my sheet just so that I can reference all of my skills and everything easily because I'm old school. <laughs> hey, that comes in really handy when taking care of your uh, talents. Yep. Yeah. And, and you'll notice with the minis, uh, the three guys that are really good with piloting have three ships, which are two-seater Y-wings. We have two guys that aren't so great with piloting. One of them can actually pilot, but he's not great at it. So who would like to partner which, with, with which pilot as their co-pilot, by the way? Who is the squadron leader? Sobex. Yep, that okay. would be the Doug. I would like to fly with Sobex, then. Okay, so just in general, I'll have a little marker there so we know that which ship you're in, just so you know. And then, we, and then uh, Scott. Scott's our computer guy. He's our slicer on the team. Believe it or not, our astromech is great at mechanics and amazing at piloting and pretty good at shooting, but not so good with the computer stuff. Okay, but not so great. Scott's the slicer guy who, by the way, if you if you looked at the cheat sheet, that uh, one of the cool things that you can do in a ship is you can slice and jam another ship's communications. Sort of like in A New Hope when they came out of hyperspace that first time to Alderaan and it was an asteroid field. How Han said, Chewie, jam that fighter. So that fighter was not able to call to the Death Star to blow up this uh, YT-1300. So jamming is an important thing for a co-pilot to do, for, or even a pilot can do themselves if they want to burn their action doing it. But it is a, a very important thing to do sometimes in combat. Yep. Well, it's a shame I have no intellect. <laughs> well, see, in this case with your character, do you have good perception or vigilance? Or leadership, uh, which I think you have leadership. I have an amazing leadership. <laughs> so as a co-pilot, you would be good with doing the fire discipline action, which basically it's a th hard three purple leadership role to give uh, the next crew member shooting a blue dice or uh, a bonus applies to additional crew on a ship. So nice. your thing would be the whole, you're calling out the shots. Okay. Or that if, I can do. Or if you have good perception, you can plot course or scan the enemy, which that's always a good one, too. Yeah, not so much. So there's always things you can do in combat. And plus, these are two-seater two -seater, uh, Y-wings. So you do have an ion turret that's, that shoots 360, by the way. So anyone yep. who's a uh, co-pilot in the ship, your job is to keep things off your ass. And that I am excited about. Because there's nothing funnier than having a TIE fighter come up behind you and go, ho, 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 I have you now. And then all of a sudden the turret turns around and starts blasting in the face. Yep. <laughs> and while there's that list of things you can do, think out of the box. Mm -hmm. You can always ask. You never know what you might be able to do.
especially if you can say, how about if I use this skill to do this thing? And then I'd be like, sure, why not? So, yeah, don't be afraid to think out of the box. As I scared you guys with all the ships I had at the bottom of the screen already. I was going through all the ships that I've already got loaded in Roll20, so I'm just like, I'm just going to put this stuff on the on this as the token screen, just in case. And uh, yes, <laughs> if you accidentally delete your token, you'll notice I have multiple copies of your tokens in different places. So that way, in case they get deleted, I can just copy paste and put them on another page. Because it's okay if it gets deleted. We can always remake it, or in my lazy case, just copy paste. <laughs> And generally how we're doing distances, which I don't have it on this page, but I will slowly materialize everyone <laughs> over to flight training page. That in space, three squares is going to be close range. That's the range most, sh most fighters fight at each other. Uh, short range is six, and then medium range is nine. On the very far right, I've got a little, little meter there. Or if you look at this TIE fighter, he's got the uh, the sweet spot is in the yellow, and then the orange is the uh, sensor range, basically. So orange is how far you can jam another ship. Yellow is where you're going to be shooting at them. And there's a whole bunch of cool things you can do in combat, like gain the advantage, uh, stay on target, things like that that help you really uh, get get ahead on the on the other guy. And I do know that Duncan was talking about when it came to some of the ship movements, he was interested in using the Genesis system version versus the Star Wars system. And I was going to ask you guys on that one because it's mainly the gain the advantage ability. The only difference is in Star Wars, you get to position yourself where you want against the enemy ship. So if they don't have guns in the back, you can say, I'm at their back of the ship and they can't shoot back at you. In the Genesis one, it gives you big upgrades and then difficulty, but you don't get that bonus. It basically doubles the bonus you would normally get, but you don't have that pick of where you're going to be right on that ship's tail, you know, where they can't get you, and you keep shooting them with impunity. Yeah, positioning's kind of nice to me, but I'm game for whatever. I have no preference. Doesn't matter to me. I'm good. So, so Dunk, that that's your shot to try to, to sell them on the Genesis idea versus the Star Wars <laughs> idea. <laughs> so, so the the big reason why Genesis changed it is because they got rid of defense by zones um, to help simplify the game, and because a lot of, not a lot of people did gain the advantage because the benefit was so minor. Um, so they basically doubled the bonus for doing gain the advantage, where if you take the gain the advantage action, um, then you get two. You get two up when people shoot you. They get two upgrades, and when you shoot it at the person you you have the advantage over, you get two upgrades. So instead of picking a defensive zone, you just get two flat upgrades versus uh, having that versus picking a zone. Mm -hmm. I'm game to try whatever. I mean, and speaking since, of zones, our pilots. Since you on your... seem to be, since you seem to be the person that asked an opinion on it, I think we go with your opinion. All right, sounds good. So for the pilots on your character sheet, you'll notice you have the vehicle sheet filled out with a Y wing. Mm -hmm. So definitely make sure to keep track of your defenses, because I know, like, I believe our Doug pilot has ridiculous defenses, because he's a defensive driver a lot, like three times. So <laughs> I just added your defenses to your ship's shield page, which is if you look on the vehicle tab, it's got your vehicle's silhouette, which is, you guys, Y-Wings are Silhouette 3, which is basically, it's bigger than a, a truck, it's smaller than the Millennium Falcon. You know, mo most... James, can I be on his ship? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you just need to kick off the uh, commander there. The, the two guys who are always wanting to be in charge are both on the same ship. Think about that. <laughs> both leaders on the same ship might not be a good idea. 
<laughs> hey, I, I default to his command when we're in space. He defaults to my command when we're on the ground. Hey, this yep. is this is how tactical Shame squads me. do it. When it's come when it comes to ground defense, you're in charge. When it comes to the plane, shut up and shoot. So uh, for the Y wings, you pretty much only have four and aft shields, which there is a thing where you can basically double up your shields on one side. So if you're attacking, say, a really strong target like a Death Star that you know is going to be shooting at you from the front, you can put both of your defenses to the forward. Basically, it's a it's yep. a it's one of the features you can do as an in an action. Or you can like flip it both to back if you're being chased. Yeah. So. Uh, so for our Doug's crazy defenses, I've already got that on your, your defense tab. So when I'm attacking yeah. you, just make sure to let me know what your defense is. So that's how many black dice I add against attacking you. So most of you guys I will not have memorized. So just let me know when I shoot you. So you can say, <laughs> I've got defense this, which for most of you guys is defense one, which is what a standard yeah, shield is for a ship. And pretty much that's what it is. It's just like when it comes to melee combat, it adds a black dice to the difficulty of shooting you. Just be warned, it's easier to shoot someone than to survive being shot. <laughs> Don't go piffle in space. It's a bad thing. <laughs> uh, speed makes a big deal in the game. So if you want to like go from 0 to 60, you know, slam that gas, that's actually a skill roll you have to do to keep control. Because you can't actually lose control or fail to hit the gas and stall out or bad things can just happen. So when it comes to a ship, it's just like the, the, the characters in the game. You've got armor, which is your soak. You've got hull trauma, which is your wounds. And you've got system strain, which is your strain. So hull trauma is physically getting torn up. System strain is, you know, wires and circuit boards burning out and fly-by-wire systems going haywire. Most of your ships, you want to look to where it says handling because that's something that will give you a bonus to when you fly. So the standard Y-Wing does not have, I believe, let me double check. Yeah, it's zero. Yeah, it's zero, zero handling. handling. I do know, say, Anea's character actually has plus two handling on her character sheet. So she gets to add two blue dice to all piloting checks because she has personally modified her ship because, you know, as, as you know, the rigor she is, she's all about hot rod in her ride. Nice. All right. So she, she's all about, you know, making sure she can fly well. As well as if she gets time to add things to her ship, she's got one extra hard point that she added to her ship. So there's extra modifications she can do to her ship, which I'm sure she'll do in future days when she's acquired supplies to do that. Let's yeah, don't forget see. the dock's ship. Yep. <laughs> when you're upgrading, don't forget to take care of the dock. <laughs> Ask the dock if he's got any points in mechanics. <laughs> so I got points in mechanics. <laughs> Remember that, Anea, only people that can fix you are people that are good with mechanics. Okay. okay. You don't want to be stuck wounded else. and having the doc live. And he's like, sorry, kid. Uh, I'm a doc, not a mechanic. Here's a band-aid. Ah. But I do have four green in mechanics. So, you know, I've yeah. seen it done before. So let's see. Uh, your most your Y wings have speed four, which is pretty much average for most fighters. So as one maneuver, you can go from uh, close to short. If you spend two maneuvers, which just like in regular character movement, you can take two strain to take a second maneuver. You can go from sh from close distance to medium distance, or vice versa. You know, from medium up to close. So that way you and can some get... of those. Sorry, go ahead. Oh. And uh, so just make sure your speed two to four is the average. And a lot of times combat depends on what the difference in speeds are of the ships. And some of the maneuvers are based on speed. Yeah. So like a base of actions have to be three plus, stay on targets three plus. Yeah, you have to be moving with just enough punch that you can actually be evasive and stay on target. Which stay on target and, is that when you're just diving towards a target dead on, not moving. And then for the speed or for the speed, do you have to continue to move that distance? Or since it's space and three dimensional, can you basically kind of stay in the same spot but continue to go the same speed you're going? You can like do the space third third dimension up loop de loop. 
Mm -hmm. So so anytime you're still moving at that speed, but you're not moving on the map, we're assuming you're moving up or down. Yep. Which the big thing pretty okay. much comes on once somebody's doing gain the advantage. It's you know they're 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 sticking to you close enough that uh, you're both now maintaining that crazy fast speed where you're ripping back and forth at each other. Yep. And let's see. Right. Oh yeah, and angling deflector screens is a maneuver, by the way. Sweet. And at future times, when y'all can get uh, cool gear, there is tons of cool piloting gear, by the way, for Star Wars. Like, uh, don't, don't have to worry about suffering strain because you're wearing the, the, the uber cool flight suit. But uh, maybe once you acquire those uber cool flight suits. Yeah. And uh, currently, I think only two of you guys right now have good uh, astrogation. So that that's a thing. That's how you survive. When in Get doubt, the kind of ask the astromech to always tell you where she's going, and hopefully she doesn't screw you over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so late. Accidentally so, forgets a negative sign, and now we're going in opposite directions. Yeah. <laughs> or the she rolls horribly bad, botches it, and you all pop out of hyperspace, and you're each alone wherever you are. I feel like you're jinxing me now. The, these, things, <laughs> these things happen, especially if you take a hyperspace jump at the end of an adventure. I will always try to burn a dark side point to make an interesting beginning for the next game. I will warn you that one ahead of time. <laughs> no. No. One of our very first games ended with a despair on a hyper on a uh, hyperspace jump. <laughs> at least I know my directions fairly well. Because, you know, it's nice when that happens. Because then I have a whole week or two weeks to plan where the hell you guys ended up. <laughs> and uh, one thing with ships is the distances are different than normal for, for, for ground characters. So ground characters you have engaged where it's sword combat distance. Short, which is a couple meters away where you can pistol range each other. Medium, which is, you know, down the street from each other. And then long range, which is a football field. In space, it's close is what they call engaged. So you're not like bumper to bumper, but you're in that, you know, three car lengths worth, worth of distance where you can effectively shoot each other. And that's where almost all combat happens in space, except missiles, which, by the way, your <laughs> Y-Wings all have missiles. Missiles are amazing. Missiles are great. You want to roll lots of advantages because missiles have this great thing called guided two. At least your missiles do. So uh, that way, when you shoot them, if they miss, you can decide for three advantages on a miss that you can make make another attack at the end of the round. So there's just something nice about that. When you miss, the missiles locked on and kept on doing their thing. So just remember, most of those most weapons cool effects require two advantages to activate. Like. Every one of the weapons you guys have, the front-mounted weapons and the turret-mounted weapons have linked one. So yeah, for buddy. two advantage, your second barrel hits the target for an equal amount of damage. Which is very nice. Now, the turret, of course, uh, only runs on ion weapons, so it only does system strain to enemy vehicles. Which, on the plus side, does mean any ship you destroy is not actually destroyed with the turrets, yet completely salvageable. It just needs its, you know, electrical system redone. Which is why a lot of pirates use ion weapons so they can take ships intact without killing anyone. Just saying. <laughs> um, some of your weapons, which I believe is the proton torpedo launchers, have slow fire, which is the that number that's after slow fire is slow firing and the number that's how many rounds before you can use it again. So basically, it just means your your missiles are locking back into place for the, from the magazine. So you're just waiting for the weapon to reload. Um, I don't see anything else I think you guys have that you need to worry about. Oh, do your torpedoes have concussive? I don't think they do. No. But they uh, do breach. have breach. Breach so, 6. Breach and blast holy 6. Crap. Yeah. Yeah, so Breach <laughs> ignores one armor. So I will guarantee you pretty much a glancing blow with one of these will always kill a TIE Fighter. Yeah, Blast but, 6 as well. Yeah, Blast 6 means if there's two TIE Fighters coming at you in formation, you hit one and you hit the other for, for six points of damage. 
And that's always really nice. Yep. Because one shot taking two things out is always always a good thing. But we only have three each. <laughs> and one weird thing I did notice on the Y-Wings is the missiles. So you do have limited ammo three, but they do have... Uh, let me double check. At the very end... It does have linked one. So for some insane reason, if you wanted to fire two missiles instead of one, you can have that option. It might just be a waste of ammo, in my opinion, which it kind of is a waste of ammo, unless you're shooting like a Star Destroyer. I mean, if I you're shooting... Say, unless you're shooting something big. <laughs> if you're shooting a big target, then by all means, like drop... Once the shield is down, drop your salvo and go. Yeah, that, that, that's what I'm saying. We gotta get we gotta get an ion torpedo, and then load that in in front of our proton torpedoes, and then no more star destroyer. Yeah, see that that is the beauty with a flight of Y wings is you, you can have one guy set up as the ion guy, and the other two set up as the kill guys. You know. Yeah, but again, we got the cannons too that can do that, and then fire the torpedoes. Yep. You so. take one strafing run with the ion cannons, you let them do their damage and tear stuff up, and you know, then you come in with the uh, the actual killing shot. So, any questions? Uh, yeah, I've got one. How important is inventory, and who's going to be keeping track of it? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I sad. love doing inventory work. So if you do want me, if you do want someone to do inventory work, I am more than happy to do it. So it sounds like we know who the banker of the group is. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. So in theory, because like in uh, Anaya's Y wing, she's technically a droid in her socket, so she has two seats available in her ship. So in yep. theory, you guys could dump crap in her pilot cockpit because nobody's actually going to be needing that seat right now. And in uh, somebody else's Y-Wing, there's going to be an empty seat too. So in theory, you could throw crap in the cockpit because right, unfortunately... the ship does have... Encumbrance 10. So it's a very uh, small compartment. I thought it was more than that, but it might be 10. Oh, yeah, 10. But, I mean, that's cargo stuff. I mean, weapons, yeah. guns, personal effects. The things that will keep you alive if you have to jettison it out of, you know, the, the ship. Because yeah. then again, remember, it is space. You don't want to lose your ride. Yeah, so I, I do have a question about that. So I have... Um, so I, I'm... Uh, tad bit on the overloaded side my character personally uh so i have a encumbrance of uh 16 that's full um <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> now this he is because grenades, i have okay? a whole bunch of packs um i have my utility belt in my military pack which is where i keep most of my stuff but i also have like a spacer's duffel on the side that i keep like my uh grappling hook and my water purifier in you know just in case we'd get stranded. Um, yeah, it would go in that tin. Yeah, it, it would go in the, the cargo compartment that's basically there for you to, to load your stuff into. Yeah. It's okay, even like... The, the other... the other So, like, you know, maybe my backpack and my duffel go in there, but then the rest of my stuff I can keep on me in, like, the, my, uh, com, like my part of the cockpit, I guess. You know, the, the combat-ready gear that you want to hop out of the cockpit with. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, even okay. real fighter jets, like in real life, they have a small storage compartment for the pilots when they're going somewhere. A lot of them throw, like, if they're going cross-country, they throw their golf clubs and, you know, their duffel in there. and. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they actually do have some, some compartment space. And then if the jet gets shot down, they cry when they see it crumbling down to nothing. Yeah, well. And then it explodes. <laughs> no, first it catches on fire. Then it explodes. Aviation fuel's a bitch. But on the plus side, Star Wars is like Flash Gordon. Ships burn up in flames. 
<laughs> so, Anea, what name did you decide on for your droid, by the way? <laughs> you thought I was going to do that. I didn't. Uh, <laughs> it's been a wild week, man. I didn't come up with anything. We'll see. Is there any cool leet speak you want to go with? You know, a la Cyberpunk 2077? Mm, or no. some... <laughs> uh. Sorry, glitch has already been taken. <laughs> you could use one of the ones I did before of K one seven seven. Sure. Lead speak kill. <laughs> I'm up for suggestions. I am not good at with names, guys. Well, I mean droid, I mean so well, it's what basically type of, letters what and type numbers. What droid are you actually? What kind of droid? Jim. Uh, she's an astromech. Oh, I, what series of astromech? Uh, I was thinking either an R2 or an R3 or an R4. But we can go with a K177. Hmm. So, yeah, at this point, all you need to come up with is like a R something number series and we can figure out a nickname for you as time goes on <laughs> <laughs> well hey um, as we see how you turn out <laughs> i mean yeah. you you are a rigger it could be r1 gg3 yeah, you nice. know hmm. i'm cool with anything <laughs> or take off one of the g's so just rig3 yep. rigs yeah. rigs, rigs. I like that. I'm too old for this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I support this motion. Yeah. <laughs> R1G3 it is. Okay, so at the beginning of every game session, I will, of course, clear the force dice. So game mechanic-wise, uh, anytime you want to increase your skill your your dice pool skill upgrade it or upgrade the difficulty of something being done to you or by bad guys in general you can e easily click use light side points which basically it's a great economy as long as everyone's using the economy if nobody's using the economy it's a lousy economy <laughs> Much as I joked with uh, one of the games I played on on Thursday, we rolled seven light side, no dark side. We had an option there. We could not touch any of the light side points, make it a boring game, and block the GM from using dark side. Or we could use the economy as intended. It keeps George, things I exciting. Back. I always spend them. Because yeah, it keeps it, things exciting. It, it does keep things exciting. Like, you know, David knows one of the players we play with, uh, Eric. He gets all excited once the interesting things happen, for good or for bad, you know. Because <laughs> it is well, true. In my experience with Jim's uh, GMing for Star Wars, he tends to like to let you, uh, you know, slowly use up your light sides throughout the day, make sure you get all your, you know, the important checks done, and then he saves up all the dark side for the boss fight to make it as, mo <laughs> as difficult for you as he possibly can. Yeah... I, I mean, I, I can't help but it. You, hear him, you one shot my bad guys. It's lame when you, they get one shotted. If you <laughs> hear him hemming and hawing about something, flip the dice before he does, because he's yeah. usually trying to give you a chance. That's usually <laughs> the, I don't want to be a dick and just click the button right off the bat. Sometimes I'll totally be a dick and just click the button right off the bat because it's a super drama moment. And I'm like, oh, hell yeah. You got a couple gold dice there. It'll be interesting. Yeah. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? On that note, uh, was it on that note? Both players and the GM can spend uh, destiny points on the same roll. It just upgrades both, but you have to have at least one in your pool before the other person gives you one. Yep, it can't be yeah. the GM flipping and then you saying thank you, flip. Yep. Yep, that that is one of the FAQs that they've now come out with that that you can both oh. flip, which is dangerous as hell. Really? Wow. Yeah. Because yep. it just up, upgrades on both sides, so. It just increases your odds of triumph and despair. Yeah. Which is crazy. So uh, just to give you an idea on how to do it, uh, on your character sheet at the very top, you'll got that destiny pool section. So I will go ahead and clear said destiny pool. 
and you'll see that uh, it should be 0, 0 on everybody. I'm going to force player update, so you all should see 0, 0 for the light and the dark side. Yep. Yep. And feel free to click roll destiny. Wow. All right. See the dark side flow. At least it the just dark means that there's positive. lots of fear and danger and predatorial instinct. Because, you know, totally remember the dark side is just predatorial, too. I mean, it doesn't have to be negative. I mean, sometimes you need the dark side. <laughs> And, you can also be confidence and, and, and bravado. Nadia, go ahead and click yours too, because it looks like you haven't clicked yours yet. Me? Yep. Okay. Sorry. Just so blue. pretty much at the beginning of every game session, there, there you go, bring balance to the force. We're three lights and three darks. Lame. <laughs> so, so that's to give you an idea of what it's like, you know, to at the very beginning we always roll the force and destiny dice because that's a very important narrative thing that you guys can use, I can use. You can even say, hey, in a pinch. Flip a, flip a light side point and ask me if, can I conveniently have one of these? And I'll be like, well, since you spent a light side point, I guess I'll give it to you. As long as it's not you saying, I've got a Q35 rotary laser cannon in my back pocket. Which, by the what? way, I'll say, no. But if you say, eh, do I have a spear magazine in my back pocket? And I'm like, well, maybe you'll buy one next time. Maybe I'll say yes. So, you know, I'll try to be fair about that one, just because. I did my best to come prepared with all of my equipment already purchased, so I have that extra <laughs> reload on me. Let's just hope the Z6 rotary cannon I actually have doesn't overheat and blow up in my face. Because <laughs> <laughs> that is something it can do. <laughs> and that's, that is another one of the things. Weapons that say auto fire does add an extra purple dice to the, to, to the difficulty for attacking. And is that the one that also has prepare one? Yes, it does have prepare one. So the, the gun he's talking about is the one you may have seen in one of the Clone Wars episodes where a trooper brings out this Gatling gun. So it's a great gun. It is an amazing gun. You can mow shit down like nobody's business. But much like the guy in the first movie Predator with Arnold had that big chain gun and he had to wind that thing up for a few seconds, he has prepare one, which means his first round is squeezing that warm-up trigger, which has it going and those blade those barrels spinning around like a gatling gun and then he unleashes hell <laughs> no one opens a door when they hear that on the other side of the door by the way <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately for a certain imperial officer the uh the thermal detonator in the astromech didn't make such a noise <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Anything else? So so you guys know how to use I, your destiny pool. So uh, I have a flavor text request. Okay. Is there any chance that uh, our commander's Y-Wing could possibly be, you know, an old stripped-down Republic-era BTLB so that I my character could have the satisfaction of having that classic clone bubble turret? <laughs> So you've got a, a vintage model, as opposed to the other two, which were military surplus safe from the scrapyard. Yeah. Well, see, uh, I have an old model because I always bring mine back. <laughs> <laughs> that that is one of his character's stuff. thing, is he always comes back. For some reason, your squad leader never dies. <laughs> That's Dude, why I'm riding he's got defensive his ship. driving three. Jesus no. Christ. Because she's got an awesome doc. That's why. We're literally <laughs> never like going to get uh, shot it, down. What was it? I got promoted like in Starship Troopers. Well, you're in charge until you die. Or I find someone better. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally the opening for any of you to, to let him go to sleep with a frag grenade. Just then. <laughs> Feel promotion. So for the most part, with your squad, you are going to be deployed out of a C-90, the quiet, the quiet storm. And um, the picture I shared showed how C-90s dock with fighters. In the I shared that in the Facebook chat, I think. Yeah, in the Facebook yes. chat. Yep, yep. There's a handy-dandy picture that shows where fighters would, uh, up to four fighters can dock with the C-90. 
which is, by the way, a total pain in the ass for you Y-Wings. Because you, like, nub up against the uh, little little grabby arm onto your cockpit, and it opens up inside. But totally a great way for you to jump into your fighters and deploy, and then your C-90 takes off. Because remember, the C-90 is pretty much what uh, Princess Leia was captured with in the beginning of A New mm-hmm. Hope. So mm-hmm. it's it's able to be a blockade runner. It really shouldn't be a blockade runner. <laughs> I mean, all of its weapons are civilian grade. I'm just going to throw that one out at you. Because, right. yes, in, in the galaxy far, far away, civilians can have some serious firepower and still be considered civilian grade. I think civilian is more based on the number of guns you have versus the type of guns you have. <laughs> if you have 16 guns on your civilian ship, I think they're going to question you. <laughs> they're going to say, you've put too many guns on your boat. Are you a Republican? <laughs> <laughs> Pray wow. we do not alter the deal further. Okay, so, uh, and basically you guys are going to be deployed and resupplied on the C-90, but pretty much you guys are going to be on your own as a flight wing. You know, conveniently you have two capable commanders for both ground and air operations with you guys on your team. You have a very capable mechanic on the team. You have a very capable slicer on the team who also is a spy guy who's and who knows about Imperial facilities. That's a complete rumor. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have a very capable medic available to take care of your mechanical needs, your your medical needs. Yeah. <laughs> Failing that, he can amputate and put on cybernetics, and then the droid can take care of you. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> And they thankfully, collaborate. <laughs> you have an astromech who's got an astrogation, you know, chart inside her, so she can take you guys places conveniently. Your air squad leader also is pretty good at uh, map- galactic mapping, by the way. Hey, your doc's not terrible. I'm so, uh, my race is always knows their directions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you guys are a very, very capable squad onto yourselves. It's just that, yes, you, you do have a ship that you can call home when you need help. Just remember, yeah. this is the very beginning of the Rebellion, so you guys have very limited resources. Yeah. And Well, I intend to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get more capable crew and supplies. And ship upgrades. You know, you never know when you need a ship upgrade. Just saying. You always know when you need a ship upgrade. A week ago. <laughs> well, it sounds like my ships, the dock ships, the only one that doesn't have any upgrades at the moment. So, <laughs> well, te- technically, Your none. Ship has the best upgrade is me piloting it. <laughs> technically, all three of these Y wings are stock Y wings, except that uh, our rigger, basically, her her career tree gives her. Enhanced thrusters right. for the extra handling, and our squad leader has just the natural defensive driving of I don't want to get shot, but to, to make his defense is really good. I was busy learning to heal people and flying, so I was... and, and, and behind sides he pilots with his feet. I mean, how weird is that? That's pretty damn weird. What are you talking about, you footwalkers? <laughs> <laughs> feet aren't for walking; they're for eating. And flying, let's see. I'm just saying, we need a Doug Jedi at some point. <laughs> Maybe the High Republic next month will give that to us. Right. Oh, there's images of them out there. Because how difficult would that crap be to deal with? Yeah, so very bizarre. Any other questions or anything about your character sheets? No. Okay, so let's take a quick five-minute break so I can turn off this fish tank because I don't know about you guys, but it's driving me nuts. <laughs> and I can make sure the dog is in so she won't bark her butt off next next five minutes. And get yeah, sure. me a drink, and we'll come right back and start with your debriefing. Or do you want to do a test run of shooting some TIE fighters first? I'm ready to go. 
I have no preference there. I'm down for a simulation or getting straight to the briefing. Same. Okay, so we'll take a quick five-minute break. All right, cool. Sounds good. Alrighty. Waiting orders. <laughs> Never did determine where the spy guy is riding. Although the spy guy was on his own ship. No. He's a passenger. No yeah. Non piloter. <laughs> does he want to ride with uh, the Celestin or. Uh, no, you does he already have. Solo in the droid ship. No, you already have a passenger. No, I'm, I'm in the Doug ship. Yeah, you and the Doug are in the middle one. Uh huh. I'm in the bottom one. Uh, R1's piloting the top one. Mm -hmm. And then the spy either with the droid or with me. Yeah, aren't you Celestin? What's that? I'm Quinn oh. Zip. No, I meant uh, your race. Aren't you Celestin? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm 
I mean, because in theory, since there's a socket for the astromech, in theory, you could only take two sh- or only have two ships, where it'd be two people and then the one droid in one ship, and then two people in the other one, or the right. generic droid. So that's what I was curious about: was did the uh, did spy guy want to hang out with the other organic, or did he want a cockpit all to himself? Right. Got all kinds of space. Yeah, I don't care. Well, got to choose one. Uh, <laughs> it's all up to you. Pick a pick a color, blue or green. <laughs> if you don't want to ride with the droid, then we can make the entire droid cockpit just our little storage compartment. Right. Just have the entire cockpit neglected. But it is nice having two extra co- seats in case we have to pick people up for something. Yeah, right. that's true. I, I actually, actually, I like the idea of sitting in the droid, in, in sitting in the droid ship, and just pretending I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> like, whoo, look at me. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> nice. So yeah, I'll I'll be in the droid ship. That's fine, and it spreads out the organics a little bit. I'm back. What up? Not much. So you got the spy guy with you. Ooh, I get a passenger? Yeah, yep. yeah. Nice. So if you click on your token and click on the little circle, you can change, put a little blue dot on your character. Now just kind of carry over the that you're on that ship. Use those to indicate ship placements. Hey, for some reason, I can't click on my car- my token. It's not bringing anything up. No? You can't move it? Uh, nope. Okay, he needs to link yours. Everybody else can move their tokens in their ship if you're a pilot. Yep. I move right. both mine. Anaya, you can move your ship and your token. Sweet. So some reason you didn't get linked. Okay, we'll have them fix that. Oh, it's because I went off and created my own <laughs> freelance. Well, I also, completely entered all my stuff too, but he apparently... Yeah, I don't know how Roll20 it. works. I'm the newbie. No, you're good. He, he has to link that. You can't link it. <laughs> 